Hello, so this is a quick lecture on the difference between dicot and monocot roots and um, excuse the fact that it might be a little shaky um, but that apart uh, what I need to tell you guys is that uh, it's mostly middle school or high school standard but then uh, this is just the basic um, differences that uh, anybody would like to know and um, the structures that I have used, the diagrams and the differences are um, not from just a one book, but I've used reference books as well. Um, um, so, okay, let's get started. Firstly, the difference, this is the dicot as I have written it here and this is the monocot root. This is how they look and um, we'll start from the beginning, that is the root hair. Now these have root hairs and this have root hairs too so there's no much difference next we go to the epiblema or um, epidermis now the difference is a lot of book will not mention the word epidermis when they come when it comes to roots the primary reason is the epidermis of the roots is called epiblema so this is the right term but if your book mentions epidermis and your class teacher mentions epidermis it's just fine okay so this is like one layer of parenchymatous cell that forms the epidermis now i am just assuming that you know the difference between epi um you know the parenchyma cells colenchyma cells clarenchyma cells different kind of cells if you don't know you can always tell me i can do a, a separate video on that next we move on to the cortex now the cortex is the same uh, in pretty much both monocot and dicot, um, a basic uh, parenchymatous cell with intracellular spaces. If you haven't seen them, I'll show you. See, these spaces that we have here, they are the intracellular spaces that is inter between two cells, and it's present here as well as here, as you can see here and cure the only difference that a few very good quality books mention is that these are extensive i'd like to make one point very clear this parenchymatous cortex that is here is present here as well so just because i've drawn it here don't think that they're not present this side or this side they're all over i have just drawn an extra layer and then a two just to make it clear visually that these are more extensive in case of monocot roots and less comparatively less extensive in case of the dicot roots then we move on to the endodermis the endodermis is actually the last layer of the cortex i will just zoom in for you to understand better this green layer that you see is actually the endodermis and it's present in case of both monocot and dicot roots then we move on to the pericycle pericycle is actually again a thin layer of parenchymatous cell i will again zoom in to show you this blue layer all right okay so what this does is basically it protects the vascular bundle and uh, sometimes they have a varied kind of thickenings but what you basically need to know is that they are single layer of parenchymatous thin wall cells present just beneath the endodermis and they protect the vascular bundle and they're present both in monocot dicot both okay so it's same no difference then we move on to the most crucial part that is the xylem now there are a few things that we need to keep in mind first the fact that this is a xylem and phloem of a root so when we're talking about roots the xylem is exarch now i am hoping that you know the meaning of exarch and endarch but i will still give you a fair idea just so that you don't get confused when you're doing a difference between roots and stems Okay, because there's no much uh, difference in dicot and monocot, um, uh, you know, the orientation and how they are formed. So the basic difference when it comes to exarch 
endark and exark is um, you know between roots and stem uh, and it's a really confusing word to pronounce okay so moving on what you need to know is that proto and meta xylems are types of primary xylems now a lot of people will think that okay it's proto so maybe it's um you know uh, the primary one and this is the secondary one no not they are both under primary xylem and the difference is this is formed first and this is later but they are not part of later doesn't mean secondary they're not part of secondary xylem okay so if the proto xylem is present outside like on the periphery okay this part this part this part then it's called the exarch that is a proto the first form xylem is present on the outside or the periphery in both cases the periphery and this is called the exarch so naturally the one that is formed later the meta xylem will be inside towards the center that's the correct word to use not in and out this is just to make your clear okay but the exact words that is used is towards the center and towards the periphery and so they have the exarch one and then we move to phloem the phloem is i'm going to zoom in see here um this brown ones are actually phloem tissue and the basic forms are not much difference okay and um, this is it and the conjunctive tissue is the tissue that is present between the phloem and the xylem now i have used different colors um, they're all basic colors that are found in nature i have used a diagram with different colors because most books in fact almost every book that i've come across doesn't show you anything very clearly it's all very mixed match and they create more confusion now one thing that you need to know is that the xylem and the phloem is about two to six in number in case of dicot and more than six in case of monocot so this is more in number numerous if you see the picture nicely you will see i have done six or five out here but in this case i have done so many you can't even count them properly here same goes for the phloem so that is one basic important that you need to know one and uh, the second is here for here this is well developed and here this is either you know absent or uh, inconspicuous or that is barely you know prominent or very less so it's not absent per se but it's really really less so compared to it it's really well developed and spread i've shown the difference here um see just blue lines is blue dots or i've represented them as the pith they are very few very less here very less prominent whereas in case of the monocot they are so prominent so i hope you will see the diagram and remember later you can actually take a screenshot or pause and uh, draw it out if you want now when they ask you the difference between dicot and monocot there are a few differences that you need to keep in mind first is um about the number of xylem and phloem the vascular bundle two to six more than six pith well developed in case of monocot less developed in case of dicot the next part that you need to know is here no phloem parenchyma is present in monocots that is a uh, flow flow and parenchyma when i do a separate video on the um phloem tissues uh, details is there's a component a part of the phloem tissue phloem parenchyma it's present in the dicot it's not present in the monocot there's no cambium and thus no secondary growth if you don't know already you should know that the secondary growth is because of the cambium 
for you know this sort of related so if there's no cambium there will not be any secondary growth and that's for monocot okay so this is pretty much one two and um, three differences that you guys need to know and um, that is it thank you